Aerodynamics play a huge role in the world of motorsport. The higher up the motorsport ladder you go, the faster the cars get and the more they rely upon the laws of aerodynamics. However, with those laws also comes different driving styles which, for the uninitiated, can really seem like backwards logic. Well, fear not, today we're going to explain how you can learn. So firstly, we shall go through the basic principles of aerodynamics, then we'll talk you through some driving techniques and best practices involving aero. Next, we'll discuss the basics of aero setup, and finally, we'll show you a case study of an aero car and a less aero car through the same corner so you can see firsthand the effects of aerodynamics. If this is the sort of content that you like to see, don't forget to hit that subscribe button to keep up to date with all our newest videos. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Aerodynamics is the name given to the forces generated on a car by the surrounding air. For example, the most popular analogy is how F1 wings are aeroplane wings upside down, because where the plane generates lift, an F1 car generates downforce. Air runs slower over the top of the car, creating a high pressure zone, which means the car is pushed into the ground. The air below the car goes faster, which causes a low pressure zone, meaning the car is sucked to the ground. Additionally, most aero cars use ground effect, which is where the car's floor is designed to maximise the low pressure air zone below the car, which also pulls the car into the road. So because of these external forces acting upon the car, you'd be at a disadvantage driving it like a normal race car. The basic principles of track driving will always be relevant, so techniques like throttle modulation and trail braking are still used, albeit in different ways. But driving with an aero car means you have to slightly adapt these techniques to the car in question. Now, of course, the basic principles of aerodynamics means the higher the speed, the greater the force on the wings and the more your car is pressed into the road. This means that the faster you go, the more grip you get. So why can't you go through a hairpin at 200 miles an hour? Well, it's the tyres. They are the limiting factor. The aerodynamics press the tyres into the road, providing a better contact patch and more grip as a result. But there's only a certain amount of grip that they can provide before being overloaded. So that overload limit will vary from car to car, but feel the grip of the tyres and you'll begin to learn how far you can push them. One of the biggest techniques in aero cars is keeping your minimum speed up. You see, with more mechanical cars, momentarily dropping to a lower speed to help rotate the car and exit in a straighter line is more beneficial as the car cannot maintain that higher speed throughout the corner and come out of it pointing in the right direction. An aero car benefits from the higher speed, as we've already mentioned, because the additional airflow while going faster provides more downforce and therefore more grip. So this is where you have to override your common sense. Into a fast corner especially, rather than braking first and accelerating through, you should brake into the corner and accelerate out. So you use the aerodynamics to fling the car into the corner, using the front wing especially to stick the car into the road and using trail braking to bleed off any additional speed you have. By doing this, you'll notice with aero cars you can take a much smoother, rounded line through the corner, rather than a more V-shaped line you may use in a more mechanical car. Within this rounded line is the possibility of using aero to keep the car stable and keep that minimum speed higher. One thing that is absolutely not recommended in mechanical cars is getting on the throttle too soon. We spoke about keeping that minimum speed up and in a mechanical car, getting on the throttle too soon means the front end overloads, loses grip and you have to heavily modulate the throttle to get out of the corner. In an aero car, you can use this to your advantage as picking up the speed provides you more grip. This means that the car is more stable and happier to get on an early throttle than a mechanical car. We can see the effect of getting on the throttle too early in Track Titan, where a driver in a mechanical car must lift off again in order to take the corner. A driver in an aero car can have faith that the car will just stick. Now let's talk about the setup. We're not going to go through and show you exactly how you should set up an aerodynamic car because let's face it, there's a million and one possibilities. Instead, we're going to discuss how you can understand what you should change. For example, let's say you're experiencing understeer. You shouldn't just whack on more front wing and hope for the best. Firstly, you have to understand whether it's mechanical or aerodynamic understeer. A quick way of knowing that is what speed you experience it. If you find understeer at 50 miles an hour, it's probably not going to be aerodynamic and you should look at the mechanical settings, whereas if it's 150 miles an hour, it's most likely aero. Now, of course, all setup settings go hand in hand together, so you may need to change both mechanical and aero to find a good balance, but one of them will be the more prominent issue and you can usually tell by the speed. 
Now that we understand the basic principles, driving techniques and setup, let's talk about applying it on the track. As a perfect example, we're going to be looking at Parabolica at Monza. I drove the same corner in the same game with two different cars, the 2017 Ferrari F1 car and a Porsche 911 GT car. If we look at the data on Track Titan, we can see that in the Porsche you have to scrub off all of your speed first and then gradually pick it back up as the corner widens. In the F1 car there's only a small bit of braking and flicking the car in, bleeding the speed off whilst you're turning and then accelerating out. We can see that in the Porsche I've had to coast a bit until I'm happy the car has settled and I can throttle out of the corner, whereas in the Ferrari you can get on the throttle quickly and then get to 100% when the car is settled. If you'd like to analyse your own session data and see aerodynamics at work or even to figure out where you can go faster, you can sign up on Track Titan with the code AERO24 for 30 days of unlimited data insights for free. No credit card needed, just record some laps and analyse away. Now back to it, that session data is the fundamental difference between aero and mechanical cars. It's simply the mid corner speed that you are able to take. Getting used to an aero car takes work because if you're more used to mechanical cars, trusting that the car will just turn in like that does feel unnatural but that is aerodynamics at work. Going faster through a corner to get more grip seems unnatural but again that is aerodynamics at work. It's about finding a line between the downforce and the maximum grip you can get from the tyres before they get overloaded and that only comes with practice.